Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, our 10th anniversary, or birthday you could say, edition. Now as we get more viewers around the country, we get more questions. A whole lot of questions as a matter of fact. We're going to try to answer a few of those today. And we're going to show you our timeline. Now I lost the use of my right arm as a young man. I was serving in the Marine Corps at the time in a motorcycle accident. And I had to adjust to figure out how to do the things I loved. One of them being fishing and hunting. Now over the years, with the help of a few friends, one of them named Bill Mitchell, he brought in a magazine of a man shooting a bow with his teeth. This was amazing to me. So I went and I got a piece of leather and I put it on my bowstring. Before long, I was shooting a bow. Shortly thereafter, I started entering competitions and winning around the country, shooting for the IBO. I started in Fish and Wildlife as a fisheries fellow. Loved my job, absolutely loved my job. We would go out and we would manage state-owned lakes, shock farm ponds, help people with technical guidance with their personal ponds and lakes. After a few years, I started shooting some video and started doing some hunting and fishing things on the side. Next thing you know, I was talking to the Outdoor Channel. At that same time, the former host of Kentucky Afield, Dave Shuffett, decided to move on to greener pastures. At that point, I became host of Kentucky Afield in 1995, the oldest outdoor television show in the nation. As host of that show, we hunted, we fished, I thought about hunting and fishing maybe a little bit differently than a lot of people in hunting and fishing shows today. It wasn't about the trophy. It wasn't so much about the size of the rack or the size of the fish. A lot of it was to bring fresh, organic meat to the table. When we did a deer hunting segment, it was most important to me to come back and say, okay, here's how to completely clean a deer efficiently, not wasting any meat. We did a deer processing video with my old buddy Sim Harp and we showed how to take each part of that deer and make it the best we possibly could. Then through the years, I started meeting people who loved to cook. One of them was a professional chef. He was a French chef. His name was Raoul Dupree. He was from Lyon, France, and he came here to visit his daughter, who was my neighbor. We struck up a conversation as best we could with my limited French and his limited English. One day, he asked me if he could have a trout that he saw me bringing in, and he made this fantastic recipe. I said something to his daughter, does he cook like this all the time? And then she told me, he was too humble to say it, that he was a famous chef and made fantastic stuff. So we started hanging around. He started showing me recipes and sauces. It was fantastic. It was such a wonderful education. He took me under his wing. He showed me how to do things. He showed me how to make sauces that accentuate flavors from various game recipes. So. I started cooking on television in 1995. That was a long time ago. 10 years ago, I started thinking about stepping outside of just the hunting and fishing world and doing a cooking show. Not just cooking, but farming, gardening, stepping outside the kitchen and showing what it takes to bring food in, whether it be hunting or fishing, gardening, and having folks on to do things the old fashioned way. I started thinking about a theme song about 10 years ago. So I was mowing and it just popped into my head. You are what you eat so I don't eat chicken feet. I wanted the theme song to be kind of cartoonish, kind of fun, but to show what we do on the show, our mission statement per se. So it began, it was just me. So we started having folks on like Bobby Joe and Lois. Then we started having Miss Helen on with her fried apple pies. And then we would do things in our own kitchen, such as canning, we'd bring in stuff from the garden. And I asked Nikki, what she thought about starting a show. I would gradually try to get her to come on the show back in those early days. It was just me standing up there doing stuff and having guests. And I would try to get her to come on. And, and one of her early responses was, as long as you do all the talking. I said, well, Nikki, you gotta talk too. And she was very shy, very reserved. So I would have her on occasionally. 2015, Nikki has a bad car accident, breaks her neck. She's home for 12 weeks. I have to take off work for a long period of time to take care of her. During that period of time, we started thinking, maybe we should both be home. I had almost 30 years in. I said, well, why don't you come on and start doing the show with me full time? She said, well, I'll think about it. Fast forward a couple years, she retires from her job. And in 2018, she becomes officially the co-host 
of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. So when we first started, we did a lot of stuff outside on the patio. Then we had our old kitchen. Then we started cooking in the cabin. A lot of people say, man, we wish you'd go back in the cabin every now and then. So today we're gonna actually go back to the cabin and we're gonna interview Mrs. Farmer and Kelly about the early days of the show and how fun it was to get this whole thing started. So let's take a trip back to nostalgia land and go to the cabin. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yes, it Since is. we've been up here. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I remember now why we don't do as many shows up here in the summertime is... It's so hot. There's no air conditioning. <laughs> Just like the old days. That's right. But you know what? As time has flown by, I look back on this 10 years ago, mm -hmm. we started thinking about this whole lot. What, what did you think about me even doing something like this, a cooking show? I, I figured it would go good because when you cooked on Kentucky Field, people loved it. Mm. So I thought that would be great. I liked your idea because I was still working. I'm like, go for it. Yay. Now, way early, I would try to get Nikki to come on a show. And she says, no, I don't do this. I don't do this TV thing for long. I said, Nikki, this is our kitchen. It's not, you know, it's not a television show per se. It's just us cooking. But what did you say? Yes, but you would sneak me and you would act like you needed somebody to cut stuff or whatever. Just come cut this up for me. She so say, please do all the talking. I'm yes, saying, as no, long as I didn't talk. I can't, I can't do all the talking. That's right. I'm not, a, I'm not a talker. But before long, because Kelly's behind the camera and because we're in our setting in our kitchen, you kind of forget the cameras. Mm -hmm. You kind of forget that it's a TV show. And then now that we go out and we meet people who are from the show, right? you kind of know who we're talking to out there. And plus, I'm hungry. I'm starving. So it's it's, I want to eat. So I'm good, I'm good to cook. So some of the questions that have been on the show is why wasn't anybody included in the title song, which I wrote almost to the day 10 years ago mm -hmm. and recorded in our studio. At that time, there was no Nikki. And there wasn't even Kelly at that yeah. time. We had another producer who started out for a very short time, and Kelly came back to Kentucky, and she stepped right in right. and did a fantastic job. Don't tell her. Us. I won't tell her. So when I wrote the song, it was just Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Now, if I had to go back, and maybe someday I will redo the no, song. I like the song. Just you like it like it, it I like it like it is. I think we'll change it someday, though. <laughs> so anyhow, it turned out to be this family thing. Mm -hmm. So looking back, are you glad we did it? Yeah, I am. This is fun. I'm enjoying myself. Now we got to bring Kelly up here because she's been a huge part of this. Yes, she has. So 10 years ago, she moved from Virginia back to here. She came in, looked around. She had her education yes. in this field. Since she was a little kid, she was interested in behind the camera, mm -hmm. the editing process. She did some videos of you. And she's really good at she, it, but don't tell is. anybody. <laughs> but let's get Kelly on here to talk about the early days of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Here's Kelly. She's behind the camera. She worked really hard to make a good show. What were your thoughts when I said, you thinking, okay, he's doing a cooking show? He's got the music ready? Did you think that would be a cool job? Yeah, because that's all I watched was cooking shows, so I was excited. Now, I gotta say, she's a great cook in her own right. She oh, does amazing, so seriously. She has this over every now and then and for somebody's birthday or something, she cooks these huge meals. They're absolutely extraordinary. Well, I learn from the best. It's genetic. <laughs> so we look back and you think about the early days. Think about some of the early shows that you did. What are some of your favorite things that you've done over the years? The hog killing, that was so interesting. I had never even seen that process. So like the whole, we spent like that whole day doing it. Yeah. And that was just cool to see all the behind the scenes, some of the stuff I didn't want to see, <laughs> but it was still really cool. I was like, I'd never experienced that because we were more city kids. Yeah. Girls. And you know, you think about this, the old timer said they use everything except for the squeal. They did. Everything was used. So did you, did you find that any, any did you get queasy or did I you? I didn't eat anything that day. <laughs> I will eat pork to this day. I still love pork. It was cool to see, but during it, I couldn't eat it. All right, go back. What are some other things you've worked on that you've enjoyed? Or people maybe that we've had on or things that we've done? Obviously, your venison roast is my favorite recipe to this day. I make it for everybody. The one I did with the mustard. Yes, the, the mustard. and Oh, it was so good. That was a happy mistake. That was just stuff so I mixed good. together. I, I think I made thing. it last night. Yeah. No kidding. It's my favorite one. But I loved the chicken feet. It was so interesting to me. Yeah. I like all the weird ones. And then the cow head tacos. Like, those were just... I mean, stuff that you wouldn't just I make. ate an eyeball. You did. And I ate I brains. did not. 
Now, when the eyeball popped in my mouth, I no. was like, okay, no. that's different. No, thanks. That still was pretty tasty. But even cow tongue, we did that. That was actually delicious. I thought that was good. Smoked. I like all the weird stuff, I guess. So, 10 years. Can you believe 10 years has flown by? You were in Bush Gardens doing stuff for them. You came up here. Did you think it would work? What were your thoughts? I never thought it wouldn't. I just didn't know, like, I didn't know what to expect because I'd never worked for a TV show. Like, I had done videos for them for, like, their online and stuff, but never... I was excited. It was fun. I've learned, I feel like looking at our old stuff to now, how much we've just learned oh, from yeah. filming is cool. Now, let me tell you something about her. It took me years and years and years to gain the title executive producer. I don't know if anybody as young as her has ever been co-executive producer of a television show. And you know what? She earned it almost immediately. She came up with these ideas, she came up with this, she came up with that. She learned the system that I did, used over the years and added to that. She's a perfectionist, <laughs> I, I give her that. So, what are some things you'd like to do in the next 10 years? Cook. cook. You want to cook on the show? Oh, no, not me. Today? No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I'm talking about for the show, what would you like to do? We love it. Kelly needs to cook no, on the no. show, Nikki, what do you think? No. I do like traveling. I think it's fun to see other places and go other places, but I just love eating all your food. That's my favorite part of working the show. <laughs> so, this is Kelly. I would clap for her if I could. I got you. Great job. Thank Wonderful you. job. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the future. Now let's get Nikki back in here. Do you want us to cook you something for lunch? Please, I'm starving. How about some catfish? Sounds good. Let's do it. Okay. We got chocolate on our peanut butter. Oh my goodness. And vice versa. Ooh. That's not going to be good. Nobody will want to eat that. I will. Nobody will want to eat it. Nobody will want to eat that. There. Papa, may I please eat it? No, oh, that looks terrible. But oh. Papa, we're going to have to spank your butt if you don't let us eat that, right, Grandma? No, well, here goes spank metal me. Spoon. Let's think about this. What are your favorite things that you like to watch and why? On the show? I love the grandkids, always, you know that, and our parents. I like when you document, like you documented Dad, which mm -hmm. I really appreciate, and I love watching the kids. They make me laugh. I watch them. You catch me upstairs watching the kids all the time. I knew the answer to that question, yeah. by the way. They're, they're hilarious to me. You know, it's, it's funny. You know, we interviewed your dad. Mm -hmm. I was sitting right there. He was sitting right there. We both knew that he was slipping. Right. And I thought, you know, I'm going to sit down and talk with him and, and grab some things that he had talked about over the mm -hmm. years. I remember the ice truck, not the ice cream truck. Right. But the ice truck that he talked about, I thought, you know, that's not too many people are going to have a memory like that. He was right. out in the country, but Papa Bill's not with us anymore. Right. But we have that. I'm glad you did that. We can go back and look. And the grandkids, when they started, they were this big. Now they're this big. <laughs> it's amazing. It is. You know what? I promised a new recipe in an old, familiar setting. Yes, you did. So I guess we better get busy. You know, our recipes, to tell the truth, are a lot of times happy accidents. Right or conglomerations of other things, other people's recipes that we add something right. here, add something there. You're gonna make a cold salad that's mm -hmm. just absolutely delicious, easy to make. Mm -hmm. Your mom makes something like this, Kelly makes something like this, but we kind of have, have taken and hybridized it. You add a couple nice like. things, that's right. Yeah. And we have this happy accent that that's tastes right. really good. I'm gonna take some catfish. You love catfish? I do love I catfish. I love catfish. If you don't like catfish, here's still a good flour cornmeal batter. What's the problem that you have with catfish most often is getting the temperature right inside and out mm -hmm. and having the batter stay on. Right. But first, let's get this salad going, Miss Farmer. All right, and this is simple. Everybody probably does this salad. Mayonnaise. I got probably two tablespoons here. Our secret ingredient is chow chow. And this is your mom's recipe that we've bottled that's wonderful. People can make their own or you could buy sweet pickles. And I think that's what gives it the best you flavor. You gotta love some chow chow. Yeah. Or some people call it end of garden relish. A couple and big Mom scoops. makes this. This is a little different from hers, but you can you can do whatever you want with yes. your chow chow. A little bit of ranch dressing. Dry ranch dressing. Just mix that what up. What is that, about a teaspoon, tablespoon? Yeah. And you know, you can kind of taste it and see what you like. I like it a lot. So simple. I've already made my noodles, so we're gonna add those in a minute. I cooked them and I How chilled them. How much is them. that, just a box? Probably about half a box. I didn't do a whole lot because it's just me and you. Peas. Did you already cook those? I already cooked the noodles. The peas, the peas, no. The peas were just shucked and they're fresh and they're like I could just. Oh, like, those are fresh. Mm, Sweet peas. Mm -hmm. yep. Love it. Peas. I'm gonna put a little bit of broccoli in here. Right. Just like the edges of a little. Sweet peppers. Mm -hmm. I like those too. Yeah, just, those are not. Those are sweet. I like them just for the, the color and they're nice. They got a little crunch in there. We had some of this yesterday. And 
I eat quite a bit of it, Mrs. Farmer. It goes good with your fish. It it's does go good. A little cold, something cold. Now, usually, sometimes, here's a behind the scenes secret. The day before we do something on the show, we'll cook it to make sure that it's perfect for you. And a lot of times, over the years, things change. My catfish batter recipe, again, will change in the next five years. And every time I do something that really thrills me, I'll share it with you. All right, something else we're gonna add. I have some uncured ham I got here the other day. There's a couple little pieces of meat in there. Would be good. I like what you got going on here. Yes. Let me stir it. Yes, thank you. All right, what next? And I'm just, I've already, I'm gonna play in these. My hands are clean. Let's just add some noodles. These are cold. I already cooked them and kind of chilled them because you don't want to put them in hot and mess up your salad. Isn't that pretty? This is beautiful. That is so summery looking. Isn't it? All right, something that I thought of that would be great to add to this, we didn't, I almost forgot, is smoked cheddar cheese. That's smoked white cheddar. And let I'll me tell you what, that. it really sets it off. I can smell that cheese right now, yeah, and it just adds so much. Now, if you want to put some fresh ground black pepper on there, ooh, oh, I want to eat all of that right, right. now. Set it aside. So, so you want me to set it aside? Yeah, set it aside. Remember you did that to Natalie? You set it more aside? Set it aside again. Now you set this aside for five more minutes. Okay, now we oh, set it aside. Okay. Get set set. <laughs> <laughs> what if I want to sit on that side? Well, too bad. Well, what now? Why do we set that aside? Because sit. you have to let it sit so it can rise, I think. So set it aside. <laughs> All right, we like to fish. Mm -hmm. That's what I did for a living yes. for a lot of years. Not too long ago, we caught some catfish. Mm -hmm. Here's Nikki with a picture. This was in Kentucky Lake. That's right. And here's me with a catfish I caught in Florida. And guess what happened to those catfish? They ended up in our freezer. That's right. They weren't swimming, they were just hanging out. That's right. So we love to catch fish, bring it into our right. kitchen and make a recipe, which we're gonna do here in a little while. While we were fishing in Florida, I was shooting tilapia. Mm -hmm. Here's a little shot of that. These fish were from six to eight pounds. By the way, that was one of my favorite things. That was fun. Now you talk about fresh caught tilapia in a natural environment. Now that Floridians don't like them that much because they're competing with the native fish. Right. So they let us shoot as many as we want. You had fun. Oh, you shot, I think my shoulder went out. Yes, you shot eight hours every day. But while we were there, we were staying at a cabin mm -hmm. and we brought our own food and we really didn't have all the ingredients for the stuff we would normally have. And I came back from fishing and you said, I don't know how this is gonna be, but I made this. And it was absolutely delicious. The combination it. of flavors are just spectacular. Talk about your sweet potatoes real quick. Our buddy Mac mm -hmm. always gives us these cute little sweet potatoes. So I've already boiled these enough because I want to slice them. So you were out and I thought, what can I, I had brought those with us. What can I do with sweet potatoes? Now, this is not how we eat every day. We try to eat healthy <laughs> at least once a month. The sweet potato's healthy. Sweet potatoes yeah. are healthy. Yeah. With the... And the Maple syrup. At least it's 100% maple yes, syrup, exactly. which is only tree sap, which right. is natural, right. which is boiled down so and see, down and down. So yeah, did maybe this is healthy. So what I did was I took an onion and I, I fried that up with butter. That's like a good way to start a yes, lot of recipes. Yes, always butter and onions. Then I'm going to slice these little sweet potatoes up into little slices and we're going to brown that mm -hmm. with some seasoned salt. I just flipped that. So that's all I had to start. Then, I know this sounds crazy, I added a little bit of white wine. You know me with my white mm -hmm. wine? And then I added a little maple syrup and let it crisp up on there and it's like a little candy. little salt and pepper? It's like candy, salt and pepper. All right, let's talk about catfish. And let's talk about cooking it to get it right. Temperature mm -hmm. is the essence. Now you think about getting it cooked on the outside and the inside, that's kind of tough. A lot of people think 350 degrees. They pop it in there. It's done on the outside, it looks nice and golden brown. You take it out and it's still cold in the center. Yeah, Nobody good. wants to eat mushy catfish. My secret is, is start at about 320, start it there and leave it there. Maybe 335 mm -hmm. max, just let it slow cook. That way it can stay on each side longer and that heat seeps up into the fish. Don't let yourself get locked into that 350 thing. So I got a cup and a half of bolted cornmeal, which means finely sifted, and about a half a cup of flour. So more cornmeal. More cornmeal. Now when you're making a fish batter, you really have to use the seasonings to make that seasoning come out or it right. tastes kind of bland. So you gotta, to this amount, I'm gonna probably go two teaspoons of salt in this. Probably go two teaspoons of black pepper. Lemon pepper, I'm gonna go, I don't know. A couple tablespoons, yum. Tablespoon and a half, it takes that to get that out. 
Then I'm gonna add some garlic, probably about, I don't know, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half. Then some onion powder. I like that flavor as well. Same there, about a teaspoon and a half. Cayenne, you're gonna be shocked. You gotta get that flavor. I'll have you pour this in here if you will. I'm gonna use probably a teaspoon and a half. You're gonna find that when you use this cayenne in here, now if you put that spoon in your mouth, you'd be like, okay, no, thank I'm you. lit up. No, thank you. But when you put it in your seasoning, it's way more subtle. All right, so now what I've done here is I've taken, just for this small amount that we're fixing, I've probably got, I don't know, half a cup of buttermilk here. And I've got two eggs. So I'm gonna put my catfish in. I'm gonna really make sure that I get that egg and that buttermilk on there. So it sticks to that. And then I'm gonna go right back into my batter. I'm gonna liberally coat that to make sure that it's covered well. I'm very excited about this because I had it yesterday and I, <laughs> I ate two pieces. It's good. Yes, it is. Now you see that's sticking yes. very nicely to that. So that's how we want that to look. Now, I really stirred up my spices in there to get that even mix. So we should be good to go. You ready? I'm ready. Ready for the sizzle? I've got just enough oil in there to come up on that. I want the bottom side to cook first, then I'll cook the top. What I do is generally three to four minutes per side. Mm -hmm. Then I'll roll it over, three to four minutes the other side, and then for one more minute, I'll flip it. I'm excited. And I'll let it sit. And we're well on our way. And again, if you had yellow cornmeal, it's gonna brown up a little bit darker. But oh my. Mm -hmm. Temperature, temperature, temperature. That's perfect. I never let that go above 350 degrees. That's 335 to 340 max. Both sides are done. It's cooked all the way through. We're gonna let it set for a minute to continue to cook until okay. it's nice and beautiful. But look at that, that's white cornmeal. It'd be a little darker if it was yellow. We got your sweet potatoes. Now those are the little white sweet right. potatoes. They're good for you before you put all kinds of sugar yeah. in them. <laughs> we have our salad over here. So when we come back, we're gonna have a beautiful plate out in front of you. Yay. Ms. Farmer, I want you to try that first. Thank you, because I'm starving. Oh, look how good that looks. Oh my. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's so light and flaky. I could eat 20 of these. You don't fill up on this. It's like so light and delicious. Isn't that good? Mm. Wow. Now, you really have to beef the spices up. You did perfect. In order for it to get that taste, to get a little bit of heat, to get a little bit of the, the tanginess of the lemon, you really got to pour it to it. Now, that wow. seemed like a lot of pepper. It seemed like a lot of cayenne pepper but it's not hot, you no. just taste it. It's perfect. Oh my. It's perfect. You did good. You want some more of this? I do. Am I gonna need to make a couple more? You do. Take a bite of that and I'll take a bite of this. I was gonna try some with you. Mm. That's a wonderful combination. It's like candy. You got the onions to get that depth of flavor. And the salt and pepper with the sweet. The salt and the pepper with your 100% uh, syrup. And this is just mm. good. This is just good. You're starving, you need a snack, you see this sitting in the refrigerator. Yeah, this is just. It won't last long. Mm. 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 So if you have additional questions around the country out there, I know where you can ask them. Go to our Facebook page. First of all, join us. But it's pretty hard. To it do. is how, hard. how do you do that? You, you know? hit like. Oh, that's not difficult. No. Recipes. We have gazillions of them. If you would like a recipe, or say my recipes change from week to week, and you say, what did he use right. that particular day? Where would you go? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Click on YouTube, subscribe, right, and you get all our recipes. That being said, Mrs. Farmer and Kelly, our 10th birthday. This is our celebration. And air conditioning is going to be the next celebration. That's right. But it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. Hope to see you for another 10 years as yeah. we dig into this catfish. To order a cookbook, email timfarmerck at gmail.com.